Welcome to the revision session of BIT degree program which is conducted by University of Colombo School of Computing. So today we are going to have revision on introductory mathematics which is EN1201. So before going to the revision I would like to remind you about the chapters that we are going to revise using the question paper. One is percentages this is the chapter number six so under this chapter the subtopics that you should cover is percentages and simple interest and compound interest so next the final chapter that is fundamentals of sequence and series chapter number seven so the subtopics which include in this chapter are definition and examples of sequences series and sequence of terms of series arithmetic progressions, geometric progressions, the sum of to infinity of series and the convergence and divergence of series. So we will move on to the multiple question paper. So here in this multiple question paper the questions can have more than one answer. So please keep in mind that when you are selecting the answer the question can have one or more answers. So, we will move on to the questions. First, question number 33. So, what they are asking is, a man spends 42% of his monthly salary on food and 12% on transport. If the amount of he spent on food is 16,800, how much was his transport cost? So, this is the answer. We will move on to the steps which show us how we obtain the answer. So since they have not given the salary, we take an arbitrary x as the monthly salary. So next, we are going to find the amount spent on the food. It's given 16,800 and it will equal to x multiplied by 42 divided by 100. Since 42% is the percentage that he has spent on his food. So, what they are asking is the amount of money that he spent on the transport. So, that means we have to find x multiplied by 12 divided by 100. So, from A, we can have that equation. Then, what we can do is we can divide these two equations in order to find that amount. That means x rather than finding the x first and substituting that x to the next equation that means normally students what they are doing is they solve x from the equation a and substitute x to the next equation so rather than doing that we can directly solve as follows right so what we have to find is x multiplied by 12 over 100 so we can find that amount directly rather than separately solving x and then take the 12% out of it. So this is how we can solve it. So we have come out the answer as 4800. So the tricky thing is without solving it separately we have come up the answer that means we can save time. So if you are going to find x separately and then substitute it and find the 12% out of it it will take some time. So next move on to the next question that is question number 34. It says a trader sells an item for 170 rupees at a loss of 15%. What was the original price of the item? That means according to this question, after the loss, he sell the item at the price of 170 rupees. So what they are asking is the initial price before the loss, the original price of the item. So let's take what they are asking is original price so we take it as an attribute x so we assume the original price as x right so what is the loss that incurred from the original price of the item 15 percent so loss will be equal to 15 divided by 100 multiplied by x so remain value after the loss so since he sells the item for 170 that means remain value so what is the remain value original price is x and loss is 15 divided by 100 multiplied by x so what will be the remain value 
the remain value will be x minus 15 over 100 multiplied by x equals 170 which has already given. So by using this equation we can find the original price which is x equals 200. So this sort of questions it's very easy to take the original price as arbitrary number and then move on with the steps that they have mentioned in the question. Finally, you can come up with the answer easily. So the answer is 200 which is the option B. So next move on to the question number 35. The simple interest on the loan taken for the 3 years period was 260 rupees. If the principal amount was 600 rupees, what was the interest rate per annum? So this is a question which is connected with the simple interest. The simple interest on the loan taken for 3 years period was 216. So they are asking about the interest rate per annum. So let's take the P as the principal amount and I is the interest amount and then we can construct the equation as this is the standard equation dot find simple interest I equals PRT. So R is the interest rate per annum. So what we require to find is the R. The interest amount is given as 216 rupees. Principal amount is given as 600. Then three years period was there. And next what we have to find is the R. R is equal to 12%. So our answer will be T. So next move on to the question number 36. So in this question, it's asking about the series. The sum of the first 10 terms of arithmetic progression is given by Sn equals minus m times n plus 2. What is the common difference of this progression? So they are asking about the common difference. We usually indicate it as d, so they are asking about the d. This is the answer. So we will move on to the steps to find out how we can solve it. If we take the first term of the series, S1 equals A1. So next S2 that means second term is A1 plus A2. So in place of A1 we can just put S1. We can construct X2 as in this format. So S2 equals 2A1 plus D. Right. So they are given that S1 equals minus 1, 1 plus 2 equals minus 3 since they are given Sn, so we can substitute the values 1 and 2 there and find the S1 and the S2. So A1 equals S1 equals minus 3 and so 2A1 plus D equals S2. So from that since we know A1, we can substitute A1 to the second equation and find out that D is equal to minus 2. So since they are asking about the common term, common term is D and D is equal to minus 2. So let's move on to the question number 37. The sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic progression is given by Sn equals minus n n plus 2 which is the same exp expression that we have encountered previously. What is the 10th term of this progression? So we will move on to the steps. So from the previous question we know that a1 is equal to minus 3 and D equals to minus 2. Initial term and the common difference we know already. So we can use the same values here. So here they are asking about what is the 10th term of this progression. So 10th term is equal n plus 1 A1 plus n minus D times D. So A10 means in the place of n we can substitute 9. So then minus 3 plus 9 minus 2. So then A10 equals minus 21. So this is how we can solve this type of questions. So in this question if you are going to again solve A1 and D it will take time. So if you carefully look at the SN given in this equation you should remind that the same expression equation you come across in the previous question. So then you can use the same values that means a1 and d in this question and you can substitute the values and find the answer. So a10 equals minus 21 the answer is e that is minus 21. So next we will move on to the question number 38. 
how many terms are there between 30 and 450 which are divisible by 4 ok let's move on to the steps so first time so 30 since they are asking about the terms terms divisible by 4 if we start on with 30 and the range they are given is 30 and the 450 if we start on with the 30 and think that what is the closest number that can be divisible by 4 is 32 so the next term can be 32 plus 4 is equal to 36 right so how can we construct the nth term so if you look at the first term it's 32 second term 32 plus 4 that means 32 plus 1 multiplied by 4 since it's second term that means 2 minus 1 multiplied by 4 it's equal to 36 so if you are going to the same order n term is equal 32 plus n minus 1 times 4 so that should be less than or equal to 450 since they are giving the upper range as 450 so our last number divisible by 4 should be less than or equal 450 so if we solve this equation we will come across n is less than or equal 105.4 so we will end up with answer t next we will move on to the question number 39 so which asks the second term of the geometric progression is minus 24 and seventh term is 3 over 4 what is the fifth term of the progression they are giving the second term and the seventh term and they are asking about the intermediate term value of the intermediate term so the answer is 3 let's move on to the steps so this is the common equation that we are using in order to find the terms so here they are given the second term that means n equals 2 which is minus 24 and it is equal to a multiplied by r r to the power 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so a multiplied by r seventh term if we take it's 3 divided by 4 and it's equal to a multiplied by r to the power 6 so how we come across 6 is n minus 1 that is 7 minus 1 equal 6 so from a and b we will be able to find the r so if we if we can just divide b from a we will come across r to the power 5 is equal to minus 1 over 32 again we can rearrange the 32 as 2 to the power 5 so from that we will come across r as minus 1 over 2 so since they are asking about the fifth term that means fifth term is equal to a multiplied by r to the power 5 minus 1 that means a multiplied by r to the power 4 so since from the second term we already know the a r so a multiplied by r to the power 4 can be rearranged as a r multiplied by r to the power 3 so from the second term we know the number of minus 24 it's the value of a r that is the second term so we can just substitute minus 24 in instead of a r since from that we can get rid of a since we don't know the value of a only so then r cube we have to substitute since we know the r as minus 1 over 2 so then r cube will equal to minus 1 over 8 by solving this equation we will come across that it's equal to 3 so next move on to the question number 14 this is the last question of the paper so here it's asked about the summation of this term which is start from 3 to infinity so the answer is 81 let's move on to the steps so here if you look at the content within the brackets you can see that the denominator is 5 to the power n minus 2 but the denominator include 3 to the power n plus 1 and also it's multiplied by 2 so first what we can do is we can take the constant term out so we take the 2 out of the summation and the summation will be easy if the denominator and the denominator have the same powers 
So, in order to equal the power of the nominator to denominator, we make it as n minus 2. To make n plus 1 to equal n minus 2, we have to subtract 3 from there. So, because of that, we have to come out 3 to the power 3 out of the brackets. So, finally, we can come across, we can simplify whatever we are finding as follows. 2 multiplied by 3 to the power 3 that is 27. So, now we need to find the summation of 3 to the power 3 divided by 5 to the power n minus 2. So, here 2 multiplied by 3 to the power 3 is 54 and now we are adding plus 3 that means now we are going to we change the limits of our summation. So, then we are come across like this. So, using the equation which we used to find the partial sums which is minus a multiplied by 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. So, this is the equation and we can substitute the relevant content from our previous calculation that means a for the a we substitute 54 multiplied by 3 over 5 and instead of r we substitute 3 over 5. So, finally we come across 81. So, 81 multiplied by this content. So, we are take the limits of the right hand side. So, since 3 to the power 5 is less than 1, finally we end up the answer as 81. So, our answer for the question 40 will be 81. So, we have come to the conclusion of the revision session of the introductory mathematics which is EN 1201 paper. So, I think you have learned a lot of things from this revision and also you have identified the common mistakes that students normally do when they are answering the question paper. So, hope you do well in your exams. Good luck to you all and thank you.